Welcome to Community Talk, a public affairs presentation of the MSA United Way and Super Talk 1270. Now your host, Jenna Gullo. Good morning, Bismarck Mandan. Thanks for tuning in to the best show that you are going to hear all week long. You are listening to Community Talk uh, and co-hosting with me. The reason it is the best show is because Ms. Amber... Jensen Rajishka is back in studio with me. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's been a while. I know. I miss you. Yeah. I mean, Nicole does a fantastic job. Miss Nicole Pesky is our marketing manager, and she's helped to coordinate the shows and all these last few times and been co-hosting. But here you are. Good yeah. old Amber Jensen. Good to be back. <laughs> I think I'm going to keep calling you by your maiden name. Is, is Kurt okay with that? Yes. I just can't. I don't know. I like Rajishka. <laughs> I like Kurt. <laughs> he sometimes uses my name. It's just easier. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Yeah, right. <laughs> he calls me AJ still. So I know. I put AJ. Now I have to do AJR. Yeah. Yeah. All of my notes. <laughs> I'm with you. Uh, so how's married life treating you, Amber? It's been good. It's been crazy. So about the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're happy that you married a nice young lad, yes. Kurt, and he's an awesome volunteer. He's always helping us out for our day of caring, for our different projects. We're always using his pickup truck and trailer. So shout out to your lovely, lovely Bo. Yeah, and he's going to join us on Friday for Live United Day. He's pretty excited. He's going to bring his uh, big brother, big sister. He's a part of that. So he's going to bring his little to the game. So, Oh, and you're a big sister. Yes. Tell us how that's been going. Yeah, so both of us got linked with two. Um, mine's a third grader and his is a second grader. And just been a really great experience to be able to spend time um, with those kids, be able to do fun activities because it's just great to have that support with the kids. And to, for Kurt's situation, there's not a dad in the family, so it's a great for him to be that uh, fatherly figure mm. for that little boy. Oh, yeah. and you're such a good role model, Amber. I'm not kidding. I mean, even your leadership around the office, it really helps to keep our, you're the glue that keeps our team together. So I, I just appreciate you. And I appreciate you and Kurt volunteering for one of the 30 plus programs that we support at United Way. Uh, we know with our needs assessment, only 35% of kids in Bismarck Mandan, and this is any income level, feel that they have a positive adult role model. And so for you to be able to step up, raise your hand, live United, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So are you going to bring your little? I haven't quite decided yet. I don't know how much work I'll be doing versus getting to have fun. So oh, I haven't just quite come and decided. Have fun. <laughs> so for all of our listeners out there, uh, it's Live United Day across North Dakota on November 18th. And so we're going to be celebrating alongside our partners and other cities in North Dakota. The governor has... Uh, had a proclamation again this year for Live United Day on November 18th. And this year we're celebrating with the Bobcats. Yeah, so join us on Friday. We'll be at the Bismarck Bobcats. I believe they play the Minotauros, which is a big rivalry. So be playing Minot. And so the first 50 people who call the Bobcats office to order their tickets will get in free to the game. But there is only two tickets Per family, And so make sure you have your white Live United t-shirt on that day. Call the Bobcats office and get your tickets. The number to the Bobcats office is 222-3300. Join us. It will be a lot of fun. Well, and people can come early. The puck doesn't drop until 715. But we're going to be having some beverages and they're discounted. So you can come in about a little after 6 o'clock. And we will all be there having fun with our United Way friends. Yeah, join us. <laughs> Live United. Live United Day. <laughs> and if you're a business out there and you have Live United t-shirts or you want to thank all of your employees who gave to the United Way campaign this year, or maybe you're in the process of doing your United Way campaign, wear your shirts on Fridays. We have a lot of businesses that buy them as a thank you to their employees. So call our office too if you don't have Live United t-shirts to wear this Friday. Well, it was really neat because last year I'd Bailey bought t 
bought Live United t-shirts. They bought black t-shirts because those are, you know, pretty cool to wear as well. And they had a lot of white ones. And on the back, they put their Eyed Bailey logo, which was really neat. And so their entire office, actually, this is kind of funny. Their entire office is doing an event for their employee campaign. They do it over in Fargo as well, where the partner with the most donations has to wear a turkey outfit on Friday. (laughs) (laughs) And so anyone from the community can go over and put a ton of money in Barb Ozen's little uh, bucket there. And so we can see Barb in her Live United. No, no, her her turkey outfit. I may just have to go over to Eyed Bailey after the radio show. It's absolutely (laughs) hysterical. I've seen the costume. And so they're going to, they really live United. uh, And they'll be doing that on Live United Day. And then we had American Bank Center who bought t-shirts for almost every employee chipped in to get their Live United t-shirt as well. Yeah, and didn't, I think they did that through their Jeans Day, which is just incredible. It's just a nice way to say thank you uh, for giving back to the community, to helping so many of the programs that United Way supports. And it's just a lot of fun. So post it on Facebook, uh, find us on Twitter so we can help recognize your business for all the things that you do for our community. Yeah, we want to. We wouldn't be able to do the work that we do without our partners out there. And so Amazon Smile, that's a really easy way to help us during this shopping season. Go to smile.amazon.com and select MSA United Way as your charity. Uh, any gift that you buy or any anything that you buy online through Amazon, a uh, percentage of that will come back to United Way. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It's just a nice perk from Amazon. Yeah, and so if you're not at the smile.amazon, those funds aren't able to go towards. When I was doing all my wedding shopping, if you're just on, who isn't on Amazon or buying their toilet paper every week or their paper towels, just make sure you're on the smile portion of it and those funds come directly to us. It's great. Super easy way to give back. And then we have Giving Tuesday, the Tuesday after Cyber Monday, which is the Monday after Black Friday. (laughs) Everyone know what I'm talking about? (laughs) And so Giving Tuesday, your dollars will be matched when you give to MSA United Way. So you want your dollar to turn into two, go online to MSA United Way on Giving Tuesday. And we're going to have a very generous donor matching your contribution. So we are going to be back. This is Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week. We're going to be talking with our local homeless coalition. And so you don't want to miss it. It's going to be a great update on what hunger and homelessness looks like in Bismarck Mandan. Come back in just a couple minutes. Right now, 47. Stay up to date. The Red Eye Radio. Overnight on Super Talk 1270. Welcome back. I'm Jenna Gullo. I'm the executive director of the Missouri Slope Area-Wide United Way. Co-hosting with me for United Way's Community Talk is Amber Jensen Rzyszka. Good morning. (laughs) It's so fun to say. It is such a fun name. If I ever marry Jason, it will not be that much fun. (laughs) Yeah, but the poor kids, they're never going to get their name said right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Ooh, the kids. Yes. When are we expecting said kids? <laughs> we have months, lots wow. of months. We maybe already years. had the conversation, just not during <laughs> campaign season. <laughs> just kidding. It is campaign season for United Way, and we are at drum roll, please. No, don't drum roll. It sounds funny <laughs> on, on uh, the radio. Our goal is 2.6 million, and we are at 900. And twenty seven hundred thousand. Nine hundred and twenty seven thousand. I'm I'm kind of sick, so <laughs> pay no attention. Nine hundred and twenty seven thousand dollars. That's awesome that the community has already committed for Bismarck Mandan. So yeah. we've got a lot more to go because we want to make sure that we're funding important programs. We have Youth Works that is one of the largest programs that we fund. And Anita is going to be talking to us about the Runaway Youth Shelter and other services. Uh, and we actually fundraise so that we have Anita in our community, which is awesome because she is priceless. Uh, another place that your dollars go is to the local homeless coalition. And without your dollars, without your support, we would not have Jeannie Messel. Did I say it right, Jeannie? Yes. 
morning. Messel. 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 Yes. Yeah. Jeannie Messel, <laughs> our local director for our Homeless Coalition. Jeannie, you, you're new on board for our local coalition. I am on board. I came on board in June, and I'm excited to be here. Well, and you're doing a great job. You've Thank already you planned a number of events, and we just had the, the Lunch and Learn because it's Homelessness and Hunger Awareness Week. Yes, and that was exciting because Mayor Seminary came to the lunch and learn and sign the proclamation across the city for our hunger and homelessness awareness week so we were excited to have him on board yeah he is great i mean really i know he gets a lot of slack in the community but he really cares he he's actually very solution focused and he for a number of years has been trying to pull together a lot of the homeless providers and do what's right to make sure our community is taken care of but yeah he's very Cognizant of what community members want as well. So uh, we were really happy to have him join us yesterday. We were. We were we were very pleased with that. And so, no, go ahead, Amber. What would you say is the state of homelessness in, in North Dakota? I know you mentioned during the break before we went on that Mayor's Seminary kind of talked about that a little bit. Mayor Seminary was telling us yesterday during our Lunch and Learn that he is a runner in the morning and he is surprised at the number of individuals that he sees sleeping in doorways um, and just in areas that he would never think that the homeless people would be sheltering themselves. You know, the really good thing that people may not, um, may not realize is that although homelessness is more visible in Bismarck Mandan, it's actually the numbers have been decreasing, thank goodness, since the oil boom. It has, it has been decreasing, um, although we did have one report tell us that they're seeing an increase in the number of homeless um, in North Dakota right now or in Bismarck, Mandan area. When was that? In, by home? Um, in the last six months, we had a provider tell us that they've seen a 2% increase in the number of individuals that she is sheltering at her drop-in shelter. Okay, and so, um, and that's just compared to the first six months? Correct. Okay. Um, so what does homelessness in Bismarck Mandan look like in January? In January, every year, they do a point-in-time count across the state of North Dakota. And in January of 2016, Bismarck Mandan alone had 179 of those, and it was 900 across the state. Um, of those, 142 were sheltered. And the others were not, which included families, which is something that we shouldn't see in Bismarck Mandan when we don't have un- when we have unsheltered families. Would those unsheltered families be doubling up, couch surfing, or are they literally under a bridge somewhere on the streets? <laughs> They're probably not so much under a bridge because January is pretty cold in North Dakota. But we are when they're doubling up or they're living in their vehicles. Mm-hmm. Um, when they just don't have a place to go, that's what they do. And, you know, with 179, so 142 were sheltered. So for those, what's exciting about the numbers going down since the oil boom and it being 179 is that we can actually end homelessness in Bismarck, Mandan. I would like to think that we could, and I do think it's possible. The biggest hurdles that we're finding right now is the lack of affordable housing. Um, The resources are out there for assistance. It's just that there's no affordable housing for these individuals. Well, in the Section 8 voucher we heard today, there's still a three-year waiting list. Yes. That's unbelievable. And so that's for people who qualify for rental assistance, but they can't get those vouchers. There aren't that many available in our county. So what are you seeing as some ways that the general community can help to end homelessness? Are there things that people can be doing as far as... Um, Building more affordable housing would be great <laughs> if, mm-hmm. we, if we had that possibility. And I think the community is pulling together now more so than they were before. And the reality of the homelessness in the community is coming to the surface So we're hoping that the community will kick in and we'll be able to fill some of those gaps that are out there. Well, and one way I'm thinking of is, you know, when people are struggling with trying to meet their rent uh, and their monthly bills, there's some ways that the community can really pitch in so that we can decrease some of their expenses, like food, 
for example. That might be one way that people are able to to donate to certain food drives or absolutely. Because um, how has the food pantries been been looking, and what kind of services have they have they seen in spike in need? The last six months, the food pantries, um, the five food pantries that sent me reports, they had they had uh, provided food pantries to over four thousand individuals, which is an increase in numbers. And I think our numbers are just going to go up from there mm-hmm. throughout the the holiday season is a tough time for families. So we have a couple of the community members that will be providing the Thanksgiving dinners, providing the turkeys, providing the food baskets, which is huge for the individuals that we do work with that are living in poverty and struggle from day to day. So we have some great organizations out there that are pitching in over the holidays. Yeah, in fact, we still have eight families at United Way that are in need of services. And so if people would like to sponsor those food baskets, contact our office. It's 255-3601. Or if you know of a family who is struggling that could use a Thanksgiving basket or could use additional services or information on services, call our office and we're more than happy to help. Does the Homeless Coalition get a lot of phone calls from the community and what types? When we get phone calls through my through my phone line anyway, it's usually about people wanting to know where the services are. Um, I had a young lady call me the other day. She wanted to know where she could go for shelter. She was waiting for her check to come through so she could move into permanent stable housing. And she actually told me that she was living in her van. And of course, she has concerns with it getting colder. And I referred her to our local agencies for assistance just to get her through this, this brief period until her money does come through to help her. And thank God there's spots available. I think that's what we're really blessed with. Here in Bismarck, Mandan. And then we had something, and we had an exciting conversation this morning about what we can do as a community to better track the numbers for homelessness so that we're able to say what the problem is and what it isn't. The point in time is good, um, but we're often not sure who's double counted and, and, and it's not necessarily the best reflection of who's receiving services. It's just that one day. It's a snapshot. Correct. It's just one day out of the year that they keep track across the state of the numbers that are that are homeless, the ones that are sheltered, the ones that are not sheltered, which is a big number. um, And across the state in North Dakota in January, nobody should be homeless. Well, Jeannie, you've been doing a good job. Tell us real quick about Homeless 101 that's coming up. Homelessness 101 will be Thursday. It is open to the public, and it's from 9 to 3. We have some great speakers coming up. Heidi Selby from the Dual Diagnosis Team. Oh, I love Heidi. We'll we'll be presenting. um, Sharice Ronis from the Bismarck Public School will be talking about youth transition. Um, We have Max Wetz from the North Dakota Housing Finance that will be talking about the needs assessment that was just published for the state of North Dakota. Um, And then we have Dr. Henke that will be talking about addiction and homelessness. We're excited to have her on board. Where is it going to be at? It will be at the Brynhild Hoagland Room at the State Capitol Building from 9 to 3. And do people have to RSVP? If they RSVP, RSVP, that would be great. If they don't, that's okay, too. Just show up. Um, You can come in and visit or come in and just listen to part of it and leave. Lunch will be on your own, so we'll take a brief break in there. And where do people RSVP at? They can RSVP me at mbchp at ndhomelesscoalition.org. Jeannie Messel, thank you for the work you're doing and bringing greater awareness to the homeless this Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week. Thank you, Jenna. And for all you're doing throughout the year. Join us. We're going to be talking with Anita Tipton from Youth Works, talking about our local runaway and homeless shelter for youth in Bismarck, Mandan. Right now, 47. The Red River Farm Network. Ag News is here on Super Talk 1270. Welcome back. I'm Jenna Gullo, the Executive Director for the Missouri Slope Area-Wide United Way. Thanks so much for joining us. You can tune in every other Tuesday from 11 to noon, and you'll hear our sweet voices. I wouldn't go that far. (laughs) (laughs) Co-hosting with me, Izzy Marketing, 
Well, you were the marketing manager, and then you were promoted the operations manager, and basically the do everything in an awesome way, Amber Jensen Rojishka. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. You're such a good co-host, and I've missed you, even though Nicole Pesky does an awesome job. Uh, we have a lot going on at United Way, Amber. We do, and in the middle of it, we're celebrating with our agencies that it's Homeless and Hunger Awareness Week. That is a mouthful. <laughs> 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 uh, but it's neat because we get to celebrate it around the country and we're doing a lot of great things here in Bismarck, Mandan, um, and showing our support for all the services that do work directly with those who are facing hunger and homelessness. And so Anita Tipton is an all-star, a rock star over at YouthWorks. Uh, oh, well, thank you. You do an awesome job, Anita. You are so good with the kids that you work with, with the youth, because uh, it's not just young kids. You guys go all the way up to age 22, right? 21. 21. Yep. Aww. Um, And how long have you been at YouthWorks? Oh, goodness. I think I've been, I think it's my, I'm in my eighth year. Holy smokes. It feels like it- time is... So you started when you graduated high school. Yeah, that's exactly (laughs) it. (laughs) So what's the most shocking thing about working with the folks that you work with at YouthWorks? Um, I would say that there's just no one situation the same. Just when you think that you've got everything figured out, someone's going to walk through the door with kind of a new situation, a new scenario. And um, it's just never, no dull moment. What's homelessness look like for our youth in Bismarck, Mandan. What are you experiencing? I think one of the biggest challenge in working with youth who are homeless is that they don't even recognize themselves as being homeless. So they might have a falling out with their family, go stay at a friend's house, think that it's going to work out. Something happens that doesn't work out, and then they go to another friend's house and another friend's house, and and then all of a sudden months have gone by or even longer. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're probably not being reported to social services. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So if they're under the age of 18, um, yeah, they're, they're kind of under the radar. And sometimes when they are found, you know, social services does find them, they may, it has, you know, months have gone by. um, And then they may be close to turning 18. And then what, what solutions are there for them? And is there other family that may be able to, to take them in? What's neat is that YouthWorks is a solution for so many of those kids and even kids aging out of foster care. Because I know a lot of my kids end up going to YouthWorks and you're able to teach them what they need to become a, a productive adult, healthy citizen, <laughs> contributing community member you know you really do you you really helped get these kids on their feet because they oftentimes they don't have any other support no yeah with our transitional living program um we offer them support in kind of wherever they're at whether it be finding employment uh signing that lease for the apartment when that time comes uh cooking cleaning just really case by case what their needs are and what their goals are. And so each case is, you know, each assessment and and is specific to what their needs are. And so you mentioned helping with all of these things. And so if you were to tell someone what YouthWorks is and what services you provide to the homeless youth in our community, what do you say? Because I feel like there's so much. And I've been working with United Way for four years, and I still am like, oh, YouthWorks does that too. Like I learn something new every day. Well, we have 13 beds in the community for these youth to stay. When they're there, they um, meet with a case manager on a weekly basis to kind of see where they're at with their goals, um, where they're at with employment, possibly education, their independent living skills, budgeting, cooking, um, wherever they're at. And so um, when... when we're looking at some of the needs that your kids have, are there ways that the general community can pitch in and help out well we're always well with the winter season coming you know there's a lot of youth that'll come in they don't have hats and gloves and uh, proper winter gear 
Um, that's always needed. We always like to have that kind of stuff on hand. And that's um, expensive. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, yes. nice gloves, warm gloves, gloves that keep your hands warm <laughs> yeah. Yeah. are really expensive. And yep. oftentimes, I mean, that's the last thing kids are even thinking about. Yep. Or, and then, you know, warm boots. So if you're outside walking from place to place, if you don't have your own transportation, um, it doesn't take long for your feet to become uh, extremely cold. Mm-hmm. And you guys do something really neat uh, for our day of caring where we send you a ton of volunteers, but you organize it completely. Talk to our uh, listeners about We've Got You Covered. Oh, we, We've Got You Covered is a um, clothing giveaway at the beginning of the school year. And I don't know the exact number that, that came through, but it is just, it's put together and it happens so quickly. And people walk out of there with good Good clothes, um, a lot of brand name clothes. Uh, we partner with Plato's Closet; they are really good to us. Um, community members will just drop clothes off and donations um, at the office for the event. And I mean, we're already stocking up for next year. That's so. amazing. Um, and so, Anita, talk to us about what are some of the outcomes you're seeing at Youth Works, and who you know, how many kids you're, or youth you're seeing throughout the year. Well, I work in the uh, transitional living program, and we're serving about 46 um, youth throughout the year in the Bismarck area, and so that's housing them. Um, Non-residents, we serve about an additional 98. Those are people who may come in and do an INR. Um, We may help them. An INR is? Like an informational and referral. Um, They may want more services, getting um, help finding employment or uh, they may have the skills and the income to to find that place of their own, but we may help with that. So, um, we've provided over four thousand night four thousand nights of shelter for youth um, and their depend their dependents. Um, some of our our youth do have children of their own, um, so that number is included in that. And so, how do youth find youth works, or how do they learn about the services that you provide? Well, you know, we have a great relationship with a lot of, um, with all the providers in town. So sometimes we'll, we'll receive them from the, the emergency shelter, the um, Ruth Myers, or the school district. We'll also um, get referrals from other youth, um, word of mouth, um, friends, friends of friends or family members, um, Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's nice to know that you've been in our community for decades. Uh, yes, this is our 30th year. That's unbelievable. And you do such a great job. Um, so paint a picture for our listeners. What's, you know, who are the kids knocking on your door and why? Um, the kids that, or the youth that come into YouthWorks, um, are typically, you know, into my program, uh, staying with friends, going place to place, um, may not have had the best relationship with their parents or family, um, may have been into foster care um, previously. A lot of times they're, you know, very close to graduation, um, looking for work, wanting to work, wanting to be successful, just need that extra support to kind of get there and and the guidance. Um, You know, you think about opening a checking account or a savings account and kind of the process and the steps that that go into that and not really having any clue how to start. And so we like to, you know, go with them to the bank, go with them places um, if that's what they're they're wanting. That is just awesome. I have had foster kids. I mean, (laughs) meth addicts, you know, who are in the early teens that have gone into youth works after they've completed treatment. Um, I've had kids that had run away because they were just weren't getting away f- or getting along with their parents. And it's not that they had bad parents. It's just they had a lot, so much conflict and abuse in the home. Mm-hmm. There were parents that just struggled. And you were able to work not just with the child, but with the parent. And you do a lot of support groups as well, which I think is really important for kids um, to reunite with their family and to make it work because I've never seen a child no matter what their parents have done, <laughs> how much neglect they've undergone that does not love and want their parents. Mm-hmm. 
it's unbelievable to me. It is unbelievable that bond of parenthood. And so you're you're not just focused on the youth, but you're focused on the families as a whole. And I'm sure, you know, in your time, you've been there eight years. Talk to us about a success story, something you're really proud of with those kids. I think um, as I've been there longer, um, a, a success is when someone comes back, maybe four years, you know, you haven't seen them. Um, they've they discharged from the program and they come back just just to see how just to check in, to let them know how they're doing. Um, just having that relationship and knowing um, that that they did, it did make a difference, them staying in the program. And that's huge. You are the difference, Anita. Thanks for everything that you're doing. Thanks for your support of our local homeless coalition. I know you're on the exec committee there as well. And thanks to everyone over at Youth Works. Our United Way campaign needs to raise over 100 and $60,000 to support the services over at YouthWorks. And the best part about it, for many of the grants, they turn one local dollar into 10. And they're required to have their their local matches. So give a dollar to United Way, they turn it into 10. Support our local homeless youth uh, through the MSA United Way campaign. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. Right now, 50. On Twitter, Facebook, online, and YouTube. Supertalk1270.com. Welcome back. I'm Jenna Gullo, the Executive Director for the Missouri Slope Area Wide United Way, co hosting with me today, Amber Rajishka. Good Marketing morning. Manager, operations manager. <laughs> I don't know what you are. Actually, you're everything to me. Just hang out at the office. Yeah. Uh, hey, thanks everyone for tuning in. It is Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week. We were just talking with Anita Tipton from YouthWorks. They serve for housing 46 youth every single year. And these are youth who could be homeless. They could be coming out of the foster care system. You know, one out of every three ch- children that age out of foster care <laughs> end up into the homeless si- si- uh, system. Um, and so we got to start making some changes in our community and getting at these kids at a younger age so that we can end this problem. The nice thing is we could be close to ending homelessness in Bismarck, Mandan. Uh, we're still, you know, working on a better system in our community. Uh, we have training today, actually, for all providers who are are using the HMIS system. And we're going to start requiring that people that provide homeless services use this system uh, for each of the programs so that we can get reliable data. That's the one thing we're lacking in Bismarck, Mandan, is reliable data to really quantify the problem of homelessness. <laughs> we need to know uh, what the problem is and how many beds we have. And and it looks like from our point in time survey, we have housing for people that need it, but there were still about 35 people for whatever reason, we're doubling up or not utilizing the housing that we have. The good news is in Bismarck, Amanda, we do have the actual shelter. Um, you know what Jeannie Messel said to me on break, we were talking about what we really could use, and that's true emergency shelter for families. You know, a shelter where families can go, um, they can show up at any time in the middle of the night. If they need housing, it's a cold winter night, they're able to get in. And so Jeannie Messel, who she's the director of our local homeless coalition. She was pleading with me during the commercial break. And so that's going to be an area of focus that we'll discuss at our United Way board meetings because it's about solving problems at United Way. And I think it's, it's, I, 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 maybe I'm an optimist. I mean, I am an optimist member. I have a meeting <laughs> after this in about nine minutes. But maybe I'm an optimist in, in saying that, okay, we actually can end homelessness in Bismarck, Mandan. I mean, we're already working with our partners to end hunger. And Amber, you know, at United Way, we know that one in five kids are dealing with issues of hunger. And we just take a small piece of that, but we're making sure kids aren't going hungry over the weekend. Yeah, and I was going to say, you know, a big piece of just helping those families out is once we get them, you know, the emergency shelter, it's the case management. And so, like you mentioned, we do do a piece of that with the hunger and making sure kids don't go hungry on the weekend with the United Way Backpack Program. And we're currently packing 
840 backpacks. And so tonight we'll have Bartlett and Wes. Thanks for all of their generous support and sponsoring multiple weekends throughout the year to make sure kids go go hungry. But tonight they'll be doing 840. And so what more can we be doing to get to the root cause of why they're going hungry in the first place and making sure they get that permanent solution for housing? So when you think about United Way, think about how can you be a part of solving these problems? You want to support the United Way backpack program so kids aren't going hungry over the weekend it's only five dollars a backpack can you invite us in to speak to your employees i promise i'll keep it to 10 minutes (laughs) we'll time her (laughs) that's my biggest challenge of my life talking the gift of gab is it really a gift or a curse but no in all sincerity we need your help let us talk to your employees if they all chip in five bucks a paycheck oh my god we can end hunger right here now it's so easy we've got the means to do it um We have seen an 87% increase in the use of our local food pantries over the last five years. Uh, And so we have seen an increase in the use of our backpack program at United Way because we're, we expanded it to middle school and high schoolers. Uh, Bismarck Public Schools started a food pantry at um, BHS. And it's really cool because it's discreet. And so these older kids who bellies are aching because they're not getting the food they need and they're too embarrassed they're able to discreetly go in and get the food they need and bring it home and and we're we need your help that's just plain and simple this this summer we were able to collectively with Bismarck and Mandan public schools able to serve 16,452 meals this summer at eight different parks just awesome just awesome and it, it was low cost Really? And with just uh, so many businesses in our community, individuals in our community stepping up and saying, how can we help? And so a big piece of all of this is volunteering your time. We're going to be collecting food at uh, the Field of Truck at North Walmart for sure, uh, two weekends in December. And so if you want to volunteer, help us collect food items for the United Way backpack so we can cut down on some of the costs. You know, Jen and mentioned it's $5 a backpack. If you're going to Walmart next time, buy a couple boxes of peanut butter, buy some ramen noodles that we can give to these kids so that they are fed on the weekends. Did you just say boxes of peanut butter? A box of peanut butter. The little guys. Snack packs. Oh, I was going to say, I've never, I've you never don't get had your a box peanut butter of peanut butter. <laughs> Must be a new trend. These millennials, they know yeah. everything. Uh, but in all sincerity, we have to raise 160000 for YouthWorks this upcoming year, and they provide vital services to homeless and runaway youth. They also help young adults act like young adults and learn how to be responsible young adults. Um, We send case managers into the homes of so many of the kids that receive the United Way backpacks. We have to raise 150000 to pay for that program. It's not just kids in Bismarck, it's Bismarck and Mandan. We're serving um, so many kids that we want to make sure they have housing that's stable. We want to make sure they have transportation, that they're getting to school, that they're increasing their attendance. And then we're linking them with tutors, mentors, readers. We're making sure these kids, many of these kids, that are enrolled in our education initiative, they're 20% more likely to hit their reading benchmarks. If they're not reading by grade four, they're four times more likely to drop out of grades, out of high school later in life. So let's get these kids on the right track. And you can do that by chipping in at United Way or, hey, if you if your business is able to adopt a classroom through United Way, it's so easy, it's so much fun. And, and we have kids that are just yearning to have your healthy, healthy love and attention. Yeah, we have KLJ going to Miller Elementary. Today is their first year, first time this school year uh, going there. They're going to be working with the third graders. They're sending four volunteers over. And they were just so excited when I talked to them yesterday to be that positive influence on some of those kids' lives. They just want somebody to say hi, play with them on the playground, have lunch with them. It really makes a big impact. 
Yeah, absolutely. So call us. We're in the heat of our campaign. We'll come in to a staff meeting. We'll talk for 10 minutes or less or more if you want. Uh, And we'll just get your employees, give them the option to get involved in giving back. So many people want to. They think about it. They're not sure how we make it so, so super easy at United Way. And people can also log in to volunteerbizman.com. Volunteer bizman.com any charity or church in our community can put what their needs are um, whether it's in-kind donations or volunteer opportunities and people can just get connected directly with them we're trying to make it as convenient as possible at united way to give back and to create change and if you're wondering uh looking at your christmas list as we get close to thanksgiving and black friday another great opportunity to give back to our community you can provide a night of shelter and case management for a teen in crisis for $108. You can buy a container full of snacks for a teacher to give to a kid in need for $15. There's lots of giving opportunities this holiday season. Go to msaunitedway.org slash gift. You know, this is really cool, especially if you have a lot of people to buy for. We'll give you a card that will say, you know, My gift is in honor of Amber. And Amber, for my gift for you this year, instead of buying you something useless that you don't need, I'm going to be buying a kid a meals for the weekend. And it's only $5. And so if you're looking for ways to maybe show your employees that you care about them or give something meaningful to your children, go online to msaunitedway.org backslash gift. You can order your gifts today. We have the cards all set for you and just call our office if you have any questions. Thanks for being a part of our community and thanks for all you're doing to live united. Join us. We'll be back in two weeks.